In other news, the Nigerian economy is one of a developing nation, and like other developing economies, access to finance is critical to the growth of every business. With the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, the economic financial situation has been difficult, and there is a need to help individuals and businesses recover and build their access to finance. According to the World Bank, the poverty level was estimated to increase to about 90 million Nigerians by this year. However, due to the pandemic, the projection increased to 95.1 million Nigerians. The reality is that poverty has deepened, while households that were just above the poverty line prior to the COVID-19 pandemic have fallen into poverty. With this reality, access to finance through loans and other forms have become difficult. It's on this premise that a finance company is providing an opportunity focused on developing products to help solve the problem to access stress-free and affordable finance for Nigerians. The primary objective of the microcredit firm is to enable individuals for financial inclusion in Africa. Joining us now to speak on the boost to the Nigerian economy with financial accessibility is the chief executive officer and co-founder of MIM Finance Company Limited, George Badejo Adigbenga. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Now, we, of course, you're, you, you heard that intro. Is this a good time to do business in Nigeria based on what we're seeing happening in the economy? And what exactly does your initiative seek to do when it comes to microcredit and loan grant for businesses? Thank you. I think most of all my family members have challenged me when I say it's time. Um, and the narrative is most Nigerians are not credit worthy. And if you recall, when we're back on this program uh, last year, uh, we talked about a product that will uh, enable people uh, in employment to have access to affordable finance. We've launched that product, and we did promise uh, during that program that we're going to bring in more products that would be aimed at um, ad working Nigerians without us going to the employers, and that's the product we've got now. I think one of the uh, three uh, fundamental issues we found is that one, there isn't enough data uh, within the credit bureau uh, database to really assess uh, people's credit worthiness. So most lenders, when they decide to lend, they either uh, expect some kind of collateral mm. or they inflate their, their fees for obvious reasons because they are unsure of uh, uh, how credit worthy you are and whether you're going to actually repay. And the second issue is the fact that, and I think that's the most fundamental issue, is that there is a significant gap in our people's knowledge and understanding of being credit worthy, paying on time. And I think this is where we come in um, to kind of solve that problem. So we want to introduce a new product, which we call the Credit Builder, right? And on the premise of uh, the issues from the pandemic, uh, where people have lost their jobs and now regained work, some people have taken credit before, mm. have not paid on time, the credit score is poor. And of course, there's over 90% of the adult population that are not even within the grid, right? You know, so our uh, objective is to introduce a product that would allow consumers to have access. So we take the risk and then we report to all the credit reference agencies, yeah. right? And by that way, they start to build a credit report. The, the key part uh, to this is also education. So any of our customers will receive messages from us, calls from us on the importance of paying on time. And we have different rewards as well to kind of uh, compensate and in incentivize that process. All right. Uh, in view of what you talked about, uh, the issue of uh, lack of credit worthiness of uh, Nigerians, what has been the response to loan apps? Uh, talking about specifics here now among prospective entrepreneurs over time, how proactive and how do you gauge the probability for success rate of such business that you are, you know, uh, making credit uh, or you're aligning credit to, as yeah. it were? Yeah, very, very good question. So uh, firstly, at the moment, there isn't enough data, mm. right? So that is the biggest issue. So you need to start somewhere, 
right? And before you start as well, you need to get people to understand that, you know, this journey, um, you know, you need to understand that there is a benefit if you pay on time. So for us, there are different matrix and information that we gather, right, about you during that period, right? The time you pay, the job you work in, we ask for your bank statement. There's so many stuff, we information that we hold in that process to kind of understand as a responsible lender, how much should we actually give to you? And I think one of the biggest challenges we've seen, having researched the market, so many lenders would, um, you know, based on your income, would just give you an amount without thinking about can you afford it? You know, what's the cost of living? Do you have children and all those kind but, of but stuff? Isn't that quite risky? It is risky. It's, mm -hmm. it's a risky business, mm -hmm. right? You know, and I think that's why it's very expensive uh, to, to do this kind of business because, you know, there is that credit risk and mm -hmm. the likelihood of people defaulting. But going back to that point, hmm. right, most Nigerians can be credit worthy, right? But they do not understand what that really means. They do not understand the benefit of being credit worthy. We did a pilot last year, right? And you know, it was pretty much a research product to kind of understand exactly how consumers are gonna behave. And we found that most people, having looked at the bank statement, having seen that they can afford a loan, having seen that they have disposable income, are so relaxed about paying on payday. Right. Mm. And most of them are like, oh, we'll pay you, mm. you know, we'll pay you. And of course, we report that to the credit bureau. So the credit rating is so poor. Mm. Right. So it's really about the education piece. Right. If you compare to where we've come from, we originated from the UK. There is a very good understanding, general understanding that if I pay on time, mm. right, I can get a good mortgage at a better rate. I can get a car finance at a better rate and all those kind of good stuff. And this is where it's lacking in, in developing countries like Nigeria, and that's where we want to come in. Mm. Oh, this uh, definitely, this sounds good, but you're not Santa Claus, so what's in it for you? <laughs> well, we're a finance firm, right? Mm. You know, ultimately, uh, we, we, we will charge interest, we need to get returns to our investors, but it's not a good climate right now. You know, so many people are not coming in to come do this business for the very reasons of what we've discussed. And that is why the prices are high. You know, even to disburse a loan to someone, the cost of actually doing that from identifying uh, the person, so you have to do different checks which cost money, checking the bank statement, it costs money, disbursing the loan itself costs money. And if you don't have enough people in the market, you know, the players in the market, yep. right, the price will be high. If we can fix this problem, more investors are going to be likely to come into Nigeria and invest, and then price starts to come down. Indeed. Now, small business could be considered the foundation of uh, uh, most developed economies, including the U.S., of course. Uh, how is Nigeria faring with an influx of tech startups? And we also have the fintech uh, influx as well and other possibilities. What are the prospects here generally, you think? Very, very high. Very, very high. And I think one of our uh, greatest uh, opportunity is also our biggest uh, weakness, and that is the growth in population. Right. You know, so we're, there's a lot of people here. There's opportunities and we're seeing so many people come. Not enough, by the way, but mm. a lot of people are coming in. And I think the political issues that needs to be dealt with, which I never get into. But the fact remains that there is an opportunity mm. and there has to be a realization of some of the challenges, intrinsic challenges within this within this economy that needs to be addressed uh, for things to work the way they should. Mm. A lot of reports, uh, you know, attribute Nigeria's economy to the worsening external position exacerbated by falling foreign investment. And, and based on that, what measures do you have in place to cushion this, you know, it, someone who wants to do business with you for the first time, especially as a startup, what would you have to make this an easy transition for them? It's very, very tough. Right. Mm. Even with to get us to where we are today, you know, the narrative about Africa, the narrative about Nigeria is very, very tough. And, you know, doing our research launch as well, you know, the, the outcome, thankfully, it was a research launch. The outcome would have scared anyone. Mm. Right. You know, so I think you have to uh, be determined to want to kind of make good. Right. Do business here. You cannot be faint hearted. Uh, to kind of come do business here. And I think we're lucky to have those kind of investors that believe in us, right? And we believe in our people, we're committed, and we believe that we can make a difference. Uh, but we, it's about establishing exactly how you're going to make that difference, and that's how we want to uh, approach this. 
Yes, uh, unfortunately, the issue of uh, hyperinflation is still a uh, raging uh, scenario here in Nigeria. And uh, when it comes to businesses such as yours, um, there's a little bit of a uh, question mark. So in 30 seconds, how could you, you know, would you describe this? Well, you know, I think uh, from inflation, it, it's really double figures uh, mm. right now. Uh, it's going to get worse from what we've kind of figured out. Um, but if I look, you know, the people I see, the taxi drivers I speak to, you know, the, the, the women on the streets, you, you speak to them about uh, how can you change your life, right? And they will tell you what they need to do, but there is no finance, right? You know, and I think the solution, uh, let's exclude the political uh, part. The right. solution uh, from a private uh, standpoint is how can you actually uh, allow, you know, give these people a break and, and they know what to do. All right. On that note, George Badijo Adigbenga, CEO and founder, MIM Finance Company Limited. Many thanks for joining us on Newsday. It's good to Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.